thank you for tuning in to another episode of Blivet. Tonight, the professor tries to convince Quiggs that there's a sub-zero sugar puss on the loose. He also knows about Quiggs' smooch date. So grab your sweetheart and your toots as we welcome you to Blivet. Ah! Quiggs, you dirty, dirty animal. You let that girl out of that cell this instant. <sighs> Professor, you know that I can't do that. Ah, oh, on the contrary, Quiggs, my boy. You can do it. You're literally the one with the key. In fact, I can't do it. You can do it, though. No, I don't mean logistically. <sighs> Professor, I... She's guilty. She's <clears throat> guilty. Quiggs, have you opened your stupid farm ears for one second? Did you just say farm ears? Yeah, you got farm ears filled with corn and animal feces. How dare you bring up my upbringing? Look, okay? I have undeniable proof that she's telling the truth. Undeniable proof? Yep. That, sh that, so... So what, what, that, that some random German guy came in? His name was Don Nazi. Don Nazi? Yes, the one and only. Look. Why does that name sound so familiar? I don't know why it sounds so familiar, but perhaps this will perk your memory. Ah! Sorry, I burnt Whoa. my hands on the soup. Whoa. <laughs> so, wh what are these pictures? Th They're that's him, that's the guy I saw. Yes. Yes, if you look over here, here's a picture. Over here on the left, that's me. I know you were thinking to yourself, boy, if only homosexuality wasn't illegal, I'd like to get involved with that guy. But, yeah, that's just me, a young. I wasn't spry. thinking that one bit. Shut up, you homosexual bastard. In the middle right here, that's none other than Mr. Branister himself. And then right there, in his Sunday's best knickers, None other than... Oh my gosh, what classy looking knickers. I know. He spent fortunes on his knickers. He's also got a... He's also got a sewn-on patch of a German flag on his left la lapel. Yep, that's exactly correct. You observant bastard. Oh my gosh, and what's that under his right lapel? Is that a... Is that a... You're right. It is. A wiener schnitzel emblem. The two things that guarantee you German. But that still doesn't explain a lot. I... If you'd shut up for one second and let me explain. Look, I used to work for Mr. Branister, as you're all no doubt aware. He's the one who spread the rumors that I was a kook, a nut, that I wasn't worth my wage in plutonium. But. What he didn't tell you was that he had a hired assassin on the payroll. Of course, <laughs> you wouldn't explain that one to the IRS, how could you? What? But, Don Nazi was in fact hired by him, and I would know, because I helped him cook his books a number of times to hide the fact that he was paying out thousands of dollars. Yes, that's right, thousands, not just hundreds of dollars. Did you just admit a crime in front of <laughs> A police officer? It's been like 20 years since I did that, okay? Oh, you know. that's fine then. Yeah, I can say whatever I want. I could write a book about how I killed my wife if I wanted to. What? Well, nothing. Don't worry about it. Anyway, so, you gotta believe her, Quiggs. You gotta let her out of this cell. You and I both know that this girl isn't as capable of murdering anybody as she is capable of keeping her legs shut. Excuse me? Wait. Professor, why would you say that right in front of her? How did you know about that? Know about what? That we had Quakes. a night of passion. Oh, God. Thank you for proving my point. And that I Stop. <laughs> raised her Stop. magnificent Oh my God. Zoe, shut Bosom. up. The adults are talking. <laughs> yeah, Zoe. Look, p Professor, I. this is all very convincing, but I just... Do you I mind if I smoke a cigarette in here? I'm of course really not. stressed. It's a police department. You safe to smoke whatever you want in here. Oh, thank goodness. Do you need a rag? You look so sweaty. Yeah, if you could just pass me a rag and dab my forehead. Actually, give me the rag. I don't trust you. Okay. I yeah. saw the way you were looking at young me. I got a rag for you there, boss. Jeffrey! 
How long have you been standing there? I've been cleaning the toilets this whole time. <sighs> Jeffrey, you're so quiet. I, I'm not paid to talk to you. I'm paid to clean things, boss. Did your voice get even deeper from before? I'm not sure what you mean there, boss. <laughs> also, did you develop a country accent? <laughs> no, boss. I reckon I didn't. <laughs> okay. Well, thanks, Jeffrey. I got I got another rag for me because I'm getting all sweaty too. <laughs> now that I have this cigarette and that Jeffrey left, that guy is such a genius. You should send him down to me sometime. I saw the way he installs his phone line. Yeah, it is pretty incredible. Anyway. Kids on the ball. The funny thing is about Don Nazi is he's not even a Nazi. He what? didn't even fight in World War II. Or did he? You mean World War One? He was in World War One, not World War Two. What's World War Two? It's Wait, 1948. The war's been over for years. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> I forgot. Sorry. Um, I was on the farm when World War Two happened. I was sorting out some things and I forgot. Oh, look at me crying again. <laughs> A flood of <laughs> vicious memories just. Caressed my brain. Listen, <sighs> Professor, say I did believe you. Right, what you do? What would I do? Huh? What could I even do? You could let me go, for, for starters. <sighs> Zoe, Professor, <sighs> Zoe, <sighs> Professor. <laughs> Quakes just open the damn door. But Professor, if I, I'm confused, why why would the Brannisters hire a paid assassin, and then wh why would he kill why would he kill Mrs. Brannister and Mr. Brannister? <laughs> that, my girl, I don't know. Mystery is still afoot. I still don't understand a lot. You don't understand a lot. You're beginning to make some sense. You didn't even know when the war ended. I know. I am very undereducated. I'm just a farm boy trying to make it in the big city. <sighs> okay, well, let's say maybe I do believe you. Maybe we do. Maybe we do get out of here. What's the next step after that? Well, you have to go. Clear her name, Quiggs. Clear her name? It's up to you. There's no way I could do that. Look, you let her take your flower, Quiggs. Hey, uh, hey, uh, farm years. Look, I gotta leave the station for a moment. Looks like Jeffrey's hit puberty. I gotta take him home right away. Now listen, I'm gonna go stop at, uh, Old Wolfgang's and talk to him about that assassin. I feel like we may have missed something there. So I'm gonna talk to him about that assassin, and I'm gonna be back. So, Quiggs, make sure you hold down the fort here at the station. Okay, I got you. Oh my gosh, I just had a realization. What a convenient plot point. <laughs> I, I just realized I've heard of the name Don Nazi, the name that you've been saying repeatedly. Yeah, Wolfgang talked about him. I'm sure he would have. There's it's only two. He journeys. was an assassin. Yep. That's what he said, and that's the name of the person in the picture. Yep, that's... With the Wiener Schnitzel and the German flag? You are correct. <sighs> wow. So do, you, so do you believe us now? Yeah, I think I do. Okay, then, then you gotta let me out, you gotta... Now that I've put it all together... Proud of you, good now job. That my brilliant cop mind is <laughs> figured it out. Quiggs, yeah? I need you to let me go now. Oh yeah, for sure, here. Yeah. And I need you to clear my name with the other cops. Y you believe us, we we have to clear my name and then and then we can find Don Nazi and find out who hired him and then we'll then we'll know for sure who killed Dudley and Mrs. Brannister. Okay. I'm gonna wipe the spit off of this key that I tried to swallow earlier. Unlock the door. Move the door. Thank you. You're welcome. I think we need to do what cops would do right now. What's that? Stake out.
This has been a Just Serendipity production recorded by John McLean and James Von Bolt at the legendary Dog and Pony Studios.